So, as I said in my previous video, my review for episode 6 of season 2 of Star Trek Picard, there were a number of problems that really stood out for me upon my initial viewing. So I thought I'd make another addendum video, just to go through what some of the problems were. The majority of these problems centre around the character of Jurati and the glaring inconsistencies with her role into this intrusion on the gala event for René Picard. So when we saw Jurati in the previous episode, she had intentionally been apprehended by the on-site security. She almost offered herself up as bait, I suppose, to be captured, so she could gain access to the ID recognition system, which would allow Picard, not Laris, Rios, Raffi and Seven to get into the party to keep an eye on René Picard, to make sure that Q didn't interfere with the gala in any way, shape or form. So, having been the bait, of course, Jurati is then taken to the main security office where she will have access to the entire security system. A very sensitive location for the entire event. Now, you do not take suspicious people to the most sensitive area of your entire security operation. It's just not done. You find a room uh, that's closed, no windows, no chance for them to get away, where they can be held until the authorities arrive to come and pick them up. It could be an old storeroom. You don't take them to the most sensitive area. You secure them somewhere where you know they're not going to cause a problem between the time that you apprehended them and the time it takes the authorities to get there. So, plot convenience it is then. Girati is taken to the most sensitive area, which just so happens to be the area she needs to gain access to the ID security system. So she pulls something out of her person, something that was clearly missed on the pat-down to begin with. Where was she hiding that, I wonder? Oi, oi! She activates the device and you hear hissing coming from it. Seemingly, she's releasing some kind of anaesthetic through gaseous form, which would knock her out as well. Ah, yes, it's got to be the MacGuffin, something that achieves exactly what the writers want to achieve without any explanation whatsoever. And you're going to find that this is full of such conveniences. After Girati is successful in getting the gang into the party, she actually makes her way back onto the floor of the event, seemingly in the eyes of security who have not, maybe 10 minutes ago, escorted her off the floor because she didn't belong there. And to make matters worse, the Borg Queen is talking to Girati and Girati is responding in a public place to the Borg Queen, who's only in her head. To everybody around her, it would seem as if this crazy blonde lady in a red dress is talking to herself in a mildly psychotic way. Nobody bats an eyelid. Nobody gives a crap. Nobody informs security in any way, shape or form that there is a blonde woman in a red dress talking to herself in a psychotic way. No one. Oh my god, what the hell is happening? Just a quick side note on this scene with Picard and Soong. Soong is in attendance of the gala. It's revealed that he's a major contributor. Some nice lady pulls him away and wants to introduce him to people. This man, who has been publicly cast out of the scientific community, barred from performing any kind of experiments, barred from the scientific community, a disgraced mad scientist. He is in the public eye and he has just been dragged away by a woman who wants to introduce him to other people and shown that he has some kind of influence at this gala, which he's contributed to, sure, but he is a disgraced scientist. Why would these people be accepting his money? I'm not even... I, I, I can't. My head just can't right now. So he alerts security, you know, these absolute useless muppets that have allowed Girati back on the floor of the gala. Security are now on to Picard. Picard goes, well, I better get out of here very quickly. <laughs> so Girati realises she has to create a distraction. And this is where the real kicker comes. The Borg Queen decides she's going to intervene and she 
calls for lights out and the lights go out. As I said in my review, the lights just go out. How did it happen? How did the Borg Queen make the lights go out? What? She wasn't near anything that could have affected anything. Uh, the only other thing is perhaps some sort of EM peoples, but that would knock power out for quite some distance. And, oh, this, my poor brain. So the lights are out, and Picard sees this as his opportunity to get out and find Renee. Meanwhile, this happens. Yes, Girati at the top of a balcony in front of a room of people spontaneously bursts into song. A spotlight then appears. Where did this spotlight come from? Who's operating this spotlight on Girati? Why is there a spotlight? She gently saunters down the stairs, gracefully gliding from step to step, and the band starts playing the same song that she is singing. And now anyone who's a musician will know this is how you get a jam going. Someone will start singing, someone else knows the song who plays an instrument, and they'll start playing it, and before you know it, you're having a right good jam of it. However, it cannot happen in this way. There's full lighting, full acoustics, no mic necessary. She bursts into song, and everybody revels in her absolute brilliance. Everybody's saying Gerati's distracting everybody, but Gerati is on security's watch list. She has already been apprehended. Why are security not jumping on that stage and dogpiling her to the ground? Because the security forces for this event should be fired. They're not doing their jobs, clearly. And on that note, the Borg Queen finally has the amount of endorphins, yes, you heard me, endorphins. She finally has control of Gerati because Gerati released too many endorphins, which is precisely what the Borg Queen needed to assimilate her. So now there's 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 a limit to assimilation. You can't assimilate someone and, and you can't get into the brain if they don't have the right in, in, endorphins. If they're if they're not feeling good, you can't assimilate them. Is that what is that what this show is telling us now? After years and years and years of Borg lore, uh, you're telling us that in order for someone to be assimilated, they have to be feeling good. That is bullshit. It's utter bullshit. That just isn't the way things happen. That's not how assimilation works. And I have a feeling these writers do not know what it is they're talking about. So after Picard's um, speech to Rene Picard, and he is now convinced her that she needs to go into quarantine, they leave together. And here comes another cracker. Picard and Rene are walking down a side street, out of the event, away from the public eye. Dr. Evil is waiting for them in his car, and he runs them over. Rene Picard gets thrown to the ground. Picard gets thrown to the ground. Everyone suddenly appears outside the gala. Picard is is out for the count. He's in a coma. Where the frickity frackity fuck has Rene Picard gone? Who? How? How did she even get to quarantine? There's no logical progression here. She is almost knocked down by a car, and no one, not even her, thinks I should call the authorities because this old man has just been hit by a car, but I'm just going to go into quarantine and forget all about it. it it's, it's, it's like she's just written out of the story completely now, and the focus is on Picard. This is why I say the writers of this show have so much ADHD. It's just a bad joke. It really is. How did she get from point A to point D? There's no explanation. She's just not in the story anymore. I mean, let's be honest. These are just a couple of the questions that we all have about this episode. And to be honest with you, this season. Why, if Picard is an android or a synthetic human, when he gets hit by a car, is he bleeding? Why, if he is not a robot and he's a synthetic human, does he shock the defib machine? Why can human Picard survive an explosion to the face, but android Picard cannot survive being hit by a car? 
how when the Doctor was checking out Picard did she not see one hint that he was a synthetic human being? Why is Doctor Soon welcome at this gala? Surely everything has been revoked with this man. He is, di he is an absolute disgrace to the scientific community and Europa would wash their hands of him, surely, wouldn't they? When the Queen takes over Gerotti's body, her eyes turn black and no one in the audience sees it whatsoever. No one. Why, if Picard is in a coma and he is a synthetic human, are they not searching for Gerati? She is the cyberneticist, is she not? The Doctor, who Rios likes, simply walks out of her own clinic, leaving these people in there with no supervision or whatsoever. She has stated that she does not trust these people. This episode just raised so many more questions than it ever has any chance of answering before the end of the season. The point I'm trying to get across here is that the writers of this show, as I've said many times, are terrible writers, but they simply do not care enough about the material to think what within the realm of normal possibility could happen in order for A to lead to C. They're just not thinking. They don't give a crap. They do not care about what they're writing for. It's simply about what sounds cool at the time. What can they introduce? What wacky crazy thing can they do next? And it simply doesn't work. If you choose to become a writer, you have to know about the journey your character is undertaking. You need something to happen. Don't depend on a plot contrivance, a series of complete and utter coincidences, things coming together just because it happens in your head. You have to flesh out the world around you. You have to put some effort in, put some detail in, show the audience how things happen. You cannot have them suspend their disbelief for the entire duration of your shitty show.